is Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Chris and I are headed up to Rossville, Georgia. Um, he is driving the car. He's trying to kind of clip himself out, but you can kind of see a little bit of him. Um, we're actually going to the funeral home tonight for his first cousin. Her name is Kenny, and um, she passed away Thursday. And so we're doing the viewing is tonight and the funeral is tomorrow. So I told Chris we were driving for two hours. So he and I have read the three chapters we're going to review. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about them today with you guys. So we are in chapters. We're in Genesis. And we're in chapters 23, let's say 24, 25, and 26. And uh, so we'll talk about these. I'm going to wait just a couple more minutes and wait till everybody gets on here. And, um, but you can keep Chris's cousin's family and, your, and his family your prayers because she was only 58 years old. So it was uh, something that happened suddenly. She actually just went to bed with a headache and didn't get, wake up the next day. So um, it was pretty, I mean, it's very hard on everybody because it was very unexpected. And, um, so anyway, that's where we're going. I was trying to think if there was anything else I was going to tell them. I don't think so. But I had in mind already. Um, but I don't think there was. So, um, last week, I never even came on here and told y'all. I was hoping that y'all watched Colored Valley Cooks or Chris's channel enough to know that I was definitely in St. Mary's and on vacation and so we didn't come to you live with any Bible studies or anything last week and um, so I'm glad to be back today. Um, we are going to talk about Isaac and um, tonight um, we're going to talk about, well we talked about the death of Sarah last time. We talked about um, Isaac finding um, a wife, Rebecca. Let's see what else. So we're, we start actually with chapter 25 and they talk mostly about Abraham's descendants and then they talk about the death and burial of Abraham and um, he was buried in the same place that Sarah was buried and then it talks about Ishmael and um, talks about his descendants. Now, Ishmael was Hagar's son, the one that he ran off twice, two different times, um, because of Sarah. And so it talks about how he had 12 sons that became 12 princes of their countries. And I'd said something, or I'd said something one night about how that might have something to do with the 12 tribes of Israel, but it, I don't think it has anything to do with it, okay? It just happens to be the number 12, um, and for some reason, the Bible 12s do have a significance, sevens have a significance, and I really don't know that that, you know, is anything except, you know, what it says. So, oh, God bless him. God blessed him, Chris said. Yeah, yeah he blessed He, he said he was going to bless him. It's like he blessed him. Right. So he blessed him um, and provided him with a lot of children, just like he said he would. And they were princes of countries. So um, they were very blessed. So then we have Isaac um, and Rebecca having their babies. So Rebecca was barren, and Isaac asks God to give him a baby and he gives them twins and in the womb they're already at odds with each other and when they come out one is red and hairy and his name is Esau and he winds up being a hunter and he likes to hunt and um, so of course he was his daddy's favorite because he was the manly guy and then there was Jacob that came out later and uh, was, was the, the later of the two twins. And he 
stayed in tents and liked to read and do other things that he cooked. And so, of course, he was a mama's boy. And so, it kind of causes strife between Isaac and Rebecca because they have favoritism for their children, which they probably shouldn't do, but they did. Okay? So, Esau goes out to hunt, comes back in one day really, really tired, and decides he's going to sell his birthright to his brother because Jacob says that he'll feed him if he sells him his birthright. So Esau does it. Now, um, was it wrong on Jacob's part? In my, opi in my opinion, yes. It was wrong on both of their parts uh, because Jacob asked for it and because Esau gave it. So, I mean, just goes to show there's nobody that's perfect, you know. But he did it, and it could not be undone. Now, I don't really know why that works like that, because I can remember being young, and if me and my brothers and sisters were out, and we did something like that, um, in today's world, it wouldn't make any difference, you know. My daddy would have just been like, well, you're crazy. You ain't about to get his birthright just because he said you were. But apparently, uh, because Jacob made him swear it, it said the decision could not be undone. So what's with that, Chris? Do you know? I mean, it was a legal binding agreement, you know, that they made with each other. So they were grown men, pretty much. Yeah. So it's not like they were little kids making a stupid decision. They were men. No, uh, Esau was young enough to think that it didn't matter and he was going to be a success. He didn't need any, you know, I'm sure he was very confident that he didn't need his daddy's, you know, blessing. Yeah. But it was the blessings more than just what you get. Right. It's your position in the family and, you know, leadership after that and all that. He, care about that apparently. He didn't care about it, but he didn't really realize how important it was, I'm sure. But, um, so Esau does sell his birthright and, um, and then we go into chapter 26 and God's covenant with Isaac. And, um, it talks about how you know, where Isaac dwelt, how he prospered, how he had wells, and he drew wells, and he was in an area um, where the, they would fight over the wells, and finally, he dug his third well, and they didn't fight him over where it was, and so then he was content and happy that he had finally felt like that that was the place for him, and that it accepted him there, and, um, so, it talks about, uh, you know, just him dwelling in the land of Gerar, Gerar I, I believe is the name of it. And then, there's a covenant with Abimelech. Now, what happens is we're going to turn from talking, to, it's kind of confusing, because one minute you're talking about Isaac, and the next minute you're talking about Esau, and the next minute you're talking about Jacob. So you have to kind of figure out who you're talking about the whole time you're reading this. Because it does swap from one to the other. And they all kind of do the same things, you know. Um, and the same things happen to them that happen to their daddy. Um, but let's see. God appears to Isaac and it says, the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee. This comes out of Genesis 26, verse 24. It says, and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servants Abraham's sake. He built an altar, altar there and he called it, and he called upon the name of the Lord and he pitched his tent there. And their Isaac's servants dug a well. Then it talks about a covenant with Abimelech. Now, Abimelech, um, comes to Isaac, 
and he tells him that it's very apparent that God is with him and that he's being blessed by God and that he wants to make sure that they can uh, have a covenant together so that they won't hurt each other and won't, you know, uh, they want him to be friends, in other words. And so he makes a feast. Isaac makes a feast. They get up the next day. They make their oaths. And um, they ate and drank. And it says they swear to one another. And Isaac sent them away. See, back in that time, just like Chris said, between the boys or the men at the time, whatever, uh, when you swore something, it was like a legal agreement. So it wasn't, you know, uh, that's, that's how they made their agreements. I doubt many of them even knew how to write. Don't you, Chris? You think they could? I'm sure they could. Yeah. Well, these guys probably did, but a lot of the people probably did. Do you probably think they not. could? Probably not. Um, but anyway, it talks then, it, got, it switches over, and it says Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of uh, Barry the Hittite, and ba Bashmath, the daughter of Alana. And she is a Hittite. And it grieved his mom and dad, Isaac and Rebecca. Now, um, we're not going to read, talk about chapter 27, because that's the scheme where um, Isaac is about to die and he blesses Jacob instead of Esau. Um, and really, they trick him to do it. Even if they had sworn that oath, they still had to trick the daddy some kind of way to get it done. Um, but I will say that it does say that Esau married women that were pagan. He married both of his wives were pagan. And that's why Isaac and Rebecca were unhappy about it. Because anytime, you know, they didn't really want anybody uh, been unequally yoked, married to women that uh, worship pagan gods. Uh, because it just wasn't, you know, it wasn't good. But it says that a uh, part of that could have just been Esau's rebellious uh, nature. Um, probably not liking the fact that his brother got his birthright and he was probably just a little rebellious. So he did marry pagan wives. And so we'll talk um, tomorrow about chapter 27, which is the the um, Esau and uh, um, Jacob's blessings from their daddy. And then it says Jacob has a dream at Jacob and Rachel in chapter 29. So we will go through chapter 29, uh, 26, 27. Let's say, wait a minute. Yeah, 27, 28, 29 for tomorrow. And we'll talk about that. So if y'all have any questions, uh, you can just ask them in the in the thing. But it was pretty self-explanatory, this part was. Um, but as usual, um, it also talked about, and I, and I didn't even talk about it, because it makes me mad every time I read it. Because, you know... Um, Abraham told people that Sarah was his sister so that he wouldn't get killed. And then, um, then Isaac turns around and does the same thing. And it just aggravates me. So I kind of skipped over that part. Um, they must have had really pretty wives is all I know. And they must have not been too, too uh, worried about somebody else sleeping with them either. To just absolutely just you know, say that they're their sister. Um, so it just goes to show every everybody in this book, no matter who they are, no matter if they were blessed of God, if they were not, I mean, they're all human and they're not perfect. And uh, none of us are. And so if you're, um, if you ever get to the point where you feel like you are, then uh, you might, I don't, I, you gotta just be careful because none of us are. And it's so much better when we just accept who we really are and not that we want to act any different, you know, try to be bad or anything. But I'm just saying, 
you should know who you are compared to who God is. And the more you realize who you are compared to who God is, the more you're going to see how little we are and how insignificant we really kind of are um, in, this world, in this whole scheme of things. Um, because everybody wants everything to revolve around them and God to bless them. And God does bless people and, um, and He loves us. But he does it more out of our love for him than he does just because. So, I mean, we have to love God and, and follow his commandments and not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ um, in order to receive true blessings. And even, um, even after that, you know, we're still going to have things happen to us and problems and life's not always perfect. But you know what's beautiful about all of it? is that when we do breathe our last breath, just like uh, Chris's cousin did Thursday night, is that there's hope. There's always hope, thanks to Jesus Christ, and thanks to the mercy and love and grace that our God, the only God, the, the God of Abraham and Isaac, the one we're reading about right now, is the same God today that he was back then, and he provided a way for us Actually, he's, he even went a step above because back then he had certain peoples and now he's provided a way to the whole world, everybody in the whole entire world to be a part of his family. What, what better time could we have lived in? And we're blessed because of it and we should share the good news because of it. Um, I hope y'all have a wonderful evening. Me and Chris are going to stop on the road in a minute and have us a nice dinner. And um, and then we will carry on and and um, be with Kenny's family. And y'all just keep them in your prayers. And I know she was a lot of fun. And Chris said he spent a lot of time with her when they were little. She was always at his granny nickels. And he says that she was crazy about... Um, Mamaw Nichols, and uh, out of all the grandkids, he felt like she probably stayed there the most. And so, um, I'm sure that her children are hurt. She actually had grandkids. She was a young grandmother, but she actually had grown grandkids. Um, so, y'all just keep all of them in your prayers. And thanks for tuning in. Share the love of Jesus Christ. Share my page. And, um, We'll just go ahead and say our prayers right now, and we'll just go ahead and do that. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you today for the, the freedom that you've given us to worship you openly where we live here in the United States. We thank you for this precious hope um, so that we know when we do pass away that you've conquered death. And that we really don't die. We, we just wake up with you, Lord. And there's nothing better when someone passes close to you than having that reassurance and having that hope and how realistic it becomes in our life. I know that we're all appointed a time to die. And we will all trust that you are in control of that time that we die. Whether it's an accident or a death that's sudden or a, um, something we go through with our health, we trust you, Lord, and know that you are in control no matter what happens to us. Um, we just thank you so much and hope that you'll be with me and Chris as we travel and um, be with this family. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Y'all have a good night. We'll see y'all later. Bye, love ya.